Hi, in this video I want to talk to you about how to complete draft one of paper number two. We're shooting for about 700 words and what I want to walk through in this video is three moves that you can make to get yourself to 700 words and start the paper process in a way that allows you to expand and develop it in later drafts. So we're going to look at describing the dream career, developing topic sentences and claims, and using your research-based support to develop your paragraphs and support the claims in your topic sentences. So we're going to uh, begin with working on a description of the career. This will become the core of your intro. Later, after you draft all your body paragraphs, you'll combine your topic sentence ideas into a thesis. But for now, we just want to work on describing the career. You want something memorable. You want to make this dream job, the dream career sound cool. It's cool enough that you investigated it, and your job is to entice the reader into that feeling bring the reader into the excitement and so you want to paint a picture you want to use imagery you should consider uh, what I like to call the flying jets moment and you could also explore something like an inspiring quote inspiring quote or anecdote just be sure whatever you use in the intro isn't an important piece of evidence you're going to want to use later in your paper let me talk about flying jets moment if you remember our Air Force uh, general I believe his name is Patrick Gamble he has this great thing where he talks about even on the worst day at work no matter how bad things are he gets to walk out and he can jump in and fly a jet and that idea of the flying jet jet moment, the experience that makes it all worthwhile, the experience that encapsulates a cool career. That can be great material for an intro. Let me show you a little sample for a vivid description here. Again, I won't read this to you. I encourage you to um, stop the slideshow and read it for yourself. But what I do is I go here with uh, the dream career that I have been um, talking about, the idea of the housing lawyer. I'm not sure I spell top ramen in there, so someone might want to send me an email fixing my wagon on that. But again, it's just a draft, and I was trying to show how you can use a little drama uh, to draw a reader in and help a reader understand what's at stake in this kind of career and why someone might find this a powerful or exciting career. So again, if you want to read through that description uh, more carefully so you have something to work with, go ahead and pause the video. But I'm going to keep moving on, uh, assuming that you've paused it and looked and read through that. So once you've got that little intro going, it's time to start developing some body paragraphs. And the first move you're going to want to make is to sort through your research and pick out some reasons for work and some GE outcome skills that you see being developed in, or used in the career that you've decided to explore, the dream career you've chosen. And we're going to follow that same kind of formula that we have followed in paper number one for our topic sentences, the idea of a specific piece of evidence plus an active verb plus either a reason for work if you're answering the first guiding question or a GE outcome skill if your particular paragraph is answering the second kind of question. Notice that each paragraph would be one or the other. That You're not going to try in one paragraph to talk about a reason for work and a GE outcome. You're going to make those separate paragraph focal points. And to drive that home, I provided on the rubric and I'm recycling here in this PowerPoint presentation two sample sentences. The first sample sentence is an example of a, a reason someone works and the second is an example of a skill, a GE outcome skill that you can find on page four of the syllabus. So the first one has the specific evidence in orange with the active verb in red and the reason for work in green. The second one also has a specific piece of evidence in orange, an active verb, and then in green, the GE outcome skill. If you go back and look on the GE outcomes page, there's language about evaluating sources uh, and, and being able to be an effective researcher. So this is really the heart of your work on this first draft. And I recommend developing at least two paragraphs 
Well, you have to have at least two paragraphs that are based on reasons for work and at least two paragraphs that are based on GE skills. But I recommend in this drafting stage, start off with six paragraphs so that you have plenty of material. Find three different reasons in your research for why people in this career work and craft those into topic sentences and find three different uh, GE skills that people in this dream career use and craft those into three topic sentences. Then once you've got this set of six topic sentences, probably all of which you won't use, you can then move on to collecting evidence from your research to support each of those topic sentences. Uh, and so as you can see, I'm suggesting that maybe this first draft isn't just the first 700 words of your paper. Maybe it's uh, the descriptive part of your intro, uh, a bunch of topic sentences, and a bunch of initial research observations that you work in, and that later as you revise and expand the paper, these turn into more fully developed paragraphs. So instead of thinking about 700 words being two paragraphs or three paragraphs, maybe think about 700 words as being the description, some topic sentences, and development of each of those topic sentences with a couple of evidence sentences that you can then build on later. When we talk about evidence from research, the key thing here is specificity, right? You want a quote from an interview profile or blog, a sample document, a specific responsibility, a text that is read or studied in that career, a sample form of communication, maybe a a blog post, a text message, a memo, a research paper, whatever the kind of thing that's done in the career, a specific antidote or incident retrieved from one of your many research sources. So what's important to see here, I think, we'll go back to that previous slide, is that these are very specific, right? Look at this, an interview. So that's one specific document I'm using to support my reason. Over here, a legal motion. Again, a specific document, a specific source. This is the key to writing really good paragraphs because when you limit yourself to one specific document, you can then dig into the very specific details, quotes, phrases, examples from that document. And that's when these papers start to take off. That's when the paragraphs turn into these rich, full descriptions and discussions of evidence that points toward reasons for work and or the kind of skills someone needs to use in a job and how they use those skills. So that's what we want to do and when we bring in this research we're going to treat it just like we did the quotes from the papers um, from the readings in the first paper. We've got to set it up, we've got to integrate it, and we've got to apply it. And by apply I mean we have to explain how this evidence supports the reason for the work or the GE outcome skill. And remember with the GE outcome skill you're talking about sort of one sort of convincing the reader that they that the people in this career do use that skill, but you're also talking about how they use that skill. And that's where the interpretation of the evidence becomes vital. And finally, think about including your work cited uh, in your paper draft. In this very first draft, start including your work cited for whatever sources you're referring to. And that way you're just updating your work cited as you go along. So when you think about the draft for paper one, I don't want you to just think about the first 700 words of your paper. I want you to think about the part of your intro that describes the job. I want you to think about developing some topic sentences. I want you to think about bringing in maybe the setup and integration part of the research that you've done. And then as you develop this paper in subsequent drafts, that's when you can add more of the application or more of the details or make connections to readings. So again, think about doing different parts of the whole paper uh, and rather than trying to just work sequentially through the first two parts of the paper and I think you'll find some interesting paths open up for paper two draft one. If you have any questions don't hesitate to contact me email text phone uh, Google uh, Google Plus whatever works I'm here to help you make the connections so you have a strong first draft. Thanks.